Hey, 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 what's going on, guys? So I've got two goals for this video. My first goal is to not move around too much so you don't hear my squeaky chair all video. Uh, my second goal is we have a, we've had a bunch of new things that have made traps and defensive accounts a lot better in the last, really the last two months. We've had, uh, the first thing that helped is we got Ignis's mastery skills unlocked uh, to level 30. So people are getting tons of trap HP, tons of trap attack. Uh, the second thing is we had two different events that allowed people to get a lot of div uh, divine, or was it exalted? The, the defense research tomes needed to go from T6 traps to T7. So we had that. We had uh, the two events, the Moogle Market Monster, and the other event was like that attack expansions event, where if you attacked enough people's expansions, you would get, uh, you know, you'd hit the different tiers, and you would eventually get defensive tomes. Uh, so we had both of those. So that allowed a lot of people to get better, higher tier traps. And then, um, what else do we have? Oh, and then today, uh, or actually yesterday, we got the defense research section unlocked all the way to T8 traps. So they, they opened it up. So to do this, you're going to need elite defense tomes. You're going to need to have all enough of the other defense tomes to get your T7 traps. And then on top of that, uh, there's also a new thing like monster, it's um, monster slots. So we can defend our wall with our monsters. There's up to three monster slots right now. Uh, you need a special monster tome, defensive tome to unlock it. My understanding is one pack, you should be able to unlock one monster slot. Uh, that's what it sounds like. Don't, it's not a hundred percent, but at least most people have been able to unlock a monster slot with one pack. Uh, I can show you guys these packs. It's actually not the worst deal. Well, I guess I can't show you the packs. It's actually not the worst deal, though. Uh, I'm, I'm not getting it. Personally, I'm going to wait. Maybe we'll get some better deals for Christmas or New Year's. I'm sure we'll be able to keep getting these tomes at some point. Uh, I'm hoping we can see the pack here. So here's the T7 traps. And past this, the buffs are really good. So... We've got the city defense armor, which, look at that, 8,500 for 78 elite defense research tomes. So just let, write that. I mean, you're going to get this one. You can get quite a bit more with one pack. I want to say people are getting to level 5. Uh, so one, you could probably get 5, 5, 5, and maybe get some of these done too. But yeah, let's look at some of these numbers because they're pretty good. So like here, that level 1 is 8,500. Uh, the trap HP... It's 11,000 for level 1, up to 130,000 max. Did this one say the max? 150,000 max. Uh, this one, 110,000 max. Huge numbers. So, traps are going to be really viable again. For, for the longest time, the, for, for like a year, the only purpose of traps was a cushion for your guardians. Uh, if you had a lot of guardians, you want traps behind them because those traps are going to eat up some and absorb some of the attack. Uh, and hopefully that'll keep your guardians alive, or at least prevent them from only being wounded. Uh, so yeah, the, we, we all kind of figured this out, right? The guardians have to be wounded, all the traps have to die, and then your other troops have to be wounded, and enough of those have to be wounded before your guardians die. So a lot of people, we had traps just to keep our guardians alive longer. But I think with a lot of these upgrades we're getting, like with these upgrades, with Ignis' 100,000 trap attack and trap HP... Now that we have the higher tier traps, I think traps are, they're not only good cushion for your guardians, but I think they're actually a viable defensive unit now. <laughs> Whereas before they were just kind of a cushion, a meat cushion to protect your troops and your guardians. But yeah, these are big numbers. We've got the city defense HP, 48,000. Uh, the monster slots, we'll look at the monster slots in a minute. Uh, 96,000 defense attack. So these are going to be really important at some point. Uh, 12 million troop capacity max. Guardian HP would be really nice. Uh, and of course, we have the T8 traps now. Just fire, lightning, ice. They they didn't try to come up with anything too fancy, right? Uh, oh, actually, wait. Wait a second. They always say that. Um, what are they called, though? Is that it? They're just ice traps? <laughs> okay. Oh, did they change that? Because these used to have different names. 
Lightning. Oh, okay. So that's new, guys. That's new. It used to be like the level five traps were wards, right? And then, or these were wards. The level six traps were. Oh, I forget. I forget what they all were. But that's interesting. They changed uh, the title to these traps. Just traps level one now. That's kind of cool. Anyways, uh, back to the topic at hand. So the buffs are now really good, and these are all these are all good. Every one of these is good. So at some point, we're going to want to get that section maxed. The question is, do you start buying the packs today and only get 3,000 scrolls? Or do you wait and hope you can get better deals or get uh, maybe get them free in a Moogle Market event in a month or two? Or maybe a couple months. Who knows? It took them forever to give us the uh, defense tomes for the T7 trap. So it might take a really long time before we get it. But uh, personally, I'm going to wait. I know, I know it's a decent pack, but I'm trying to go easy on the packs, so I'm going to hold off for a while. But uh, I would like to, for this video, I'd like to look at two components to defense. So we now have these monster slots. So what monsters are going to be best to power up and use for defense? That's one topic. And the other topic is this week we also had the ultimate or the, um, what it, the, the special power up gear chest, the newer really strong powered up gear chest, the super powered up gear chest. Uh, and so a lot of people are powering up their gear or trying to decide what gear to power up. So I'm gonna look at it from a trap perspective, from a defensive perspective. What monsters should we power up and what gear should we power up? So uh, I think I'm gonna start with what monsters to power up. Since we have these new monster slots and uh, I don't think I've ever really talked much about what monsters to power up in a video. I think I've touched on it, but uh, anyways, I've thought a lot of more about it in the last, really the last 24 hours since we got this new trap feature. Uh, the, the monsters, it's cool you can defend your wall with monsters, because I really, monsters were getting kind of sad there for a while, right? You can only use them for attacks, and uh, but now we've got multi-purposes for our monsters, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so what monsters should you power up for defense? Uh, let's get into it. I'm going to start with what monsters you shouldn't power up. And the monsters you should not power up are the one and two star monsters. Uh, and the reason for that is most of the four star monsters, you're going to have to power up the level one and level two, st the one and two star monsters a lot just to make them as good as the level four monsters. And uh, on top of that, so, so what that means is you're going to use a lot of monster food to make a bad monster okay, or maybe a bad monster decent. Now what I would recommend is just be patient, get a good 4 star monster, and then save your monster food for your good monsters. And I think that's the best long term strategy, just be patient. If you don't have any good 3, 4 star monsters, uh, that should probably be your focus. Um, you know, actually, you want to have enough MP for the good, you know, the realm bosses and the Moogle monsters, but once your MP bars are full, and if we don't have a realm boss, we don't have a Moogle market, you're going to want to attack the shifting the shifting monsters. So which sh shifting monster you attack is going to depend on it. Each different shifting monster drops different eggs and different hatching stones. So we'll break in break it all down here. But uh, so yeah, that's the first thing I would say is don't power up the one and two star monsters. It's kind of a waste of monster food. The only exceptions to that might be if it's only if the only monster, if the monster only has a one star, so like the cryonade, the galvanade, and the grenades, these only have one star. There's no higher, there's no higher stars to these monsters. So like for instance, this one, if you max it out, you get five thousand three hundred eighty-three percent mage attack. So something like that's good for an attack, not so much for defense. Uh, and I think that's the same case for all the other one stars. That it's like you know the only. Uh, there's only one egg for that monster. But, uh, yeah, so I would not, pretty much for defense, I would not do any one or two star. Even these, like, that's good mage attack, but mages make up what percentage of your defense? Maybe a third, maybe half of your heavy mages. Uh, so getting that amount of attack on half your troops isn't, or on a third of your troops more likely, or even a quarter if you have a lot of siege. I'd avoid it, personally. Uh, so, yeah, let's break it down. So... I guess we should start by this. There's two philosophies of thought for trap accounts. There's a, a real um, 
offensive oriented trap account and that sounds counterintuitive but what i mean by that is your focus is more on attack and doing damage to the person attacking you so your goal is to try to capture their hero with this account and once you have their hero captured you know it's really exciting right so to capture somebody's hero you need a ton of attack because you need to eat through all their troops and you need to eat through all their astral power their astral hp so for something for one of those accounts you're going to want a really strong you're going to want a lot of attack, pretty much, right? Attack, uh, and really just attack and armor shredding. So for those accounts, that's more, uh, you know, that's one type of trap account. The other type of trap account is trying to get victories on the battle reports. And to get victories on the battle reports, you need to lose less troops than the person attacking you. So in most cases, you're going to want a lot of city defense HP or normal HP. You're going to want a lot of armor a lot of city defense armor, and that's going to allow you to not lose very many troops. And what typically, if you have a lot of higher level troops, like if you've got elementals or T7, you're going to deal a lot of damage just by the fact that you have the troop count advantage. So it's for, for that, you're going to want a lot of HP, because you're going to deal a lot of attack anyway. So for that account, you want a lot of HP and a lot of armor, just to try to lose as little as possible. And hopefully you still have enough attack to wipe out the person's troops attacking you. It's not as likely to capture their hero or to kill all their troops, but it'll keep your troops alive. It's a little more economic, too. It's, uh, you're not going to fill up your wards as quickly, so you can, you know, just instant heal it in the uh, hospital. So that's kind of the idea of two different accounts. Now, in terms of what monsters, it's actually, I think, the same monsters you're going to want for both accounts. And the reason is... Because there's two monsters that are way better than all the other monsters. And I guess I should just break this down. So let's say there's three categories of monsters. There's the monsters that you don't want to power up, the one and two star monsters. There's the, a ton of monsters in the middle that if you power them up, they'll be decent today. But they probably won't be that good tomorrow. Monsters like the Wyvern. Uh, monsters like, like the Chocobo, the Yojimbos, the Griffins, the Ronins. Uh, the giants, the goblins, the tonberries, these are the jig, jig, jigantoads. <laughs> these are good monsters for short term. So you can get pretty good troop attack out of some of these, like, uh, like monsters like the, the dual horn. You can get good cavalry attack powering up the dual horns. You can get good cavalry attack if you power up the quitsacotals. All these are good monsters to power up for the short run. The downside is what kind of attack are you going to get? So here, let's look at, for instance, this one. You get a lot of attack with the four-star Quetzalcoatl, 2,000 cavalry attack. Now, this is a good monster, right? If you power it up, you get 4,000, and these monsters, are, it's going to be a lot at level 5. You get this monster to level 5, you're going to have a ton of cavalry attack. And that's going to be good for offense. Even that'll be good for defense, uh, you know, because you'll get, especially once you get to the higher numbers, it'll be decent for defense. But it's kind of in the middle, right? Because it's somewhat specific. It's not, it's a lot of attack. But here's the thing, guys, is in a, next year, how much attack is everybody going to have? They're going to have hundreds of thousands of attack. So getting a couple thousand attack from a monster, not that big of a deal. So that's kind of the second category is they're good monsters. You'll probably use them in the short run. But what we want is a good long-term monster, a monster that's good today, that'll be just as good tomorrow, and in my opinion, there's two, and I think these two monsters, you're going to want to power up. The monsters are the mid swarms, Midgar swarms, and the reason is they have armor shredding, and I think armor shredding is the skill of the future for monsters. That's by far the best monster skill, because think about it this way, guys. People, they're going to have way more armor next year than they have now. So if you're taking out 10 or 15% of their armor, and they have like 300,000 armor, you're taking out 30,000 armor with a monster. So I think this skill, or this monster, having this skill on, on a monster is really good. It's going to be good for defense, because if they're attacking you, you're going to wipe the, all their troops out so much quicker with armor shredding. Like... Yeah, it's, it's, you're going to basically do 10% more damage if you're wiping out 10% of their armor. So I'm really liking these monsters. I mean, maybe it's not quite 10. Maybe it's like 7 or 8%. But I think that in the scheme of things is going to be a lot better than trying to get a monster 
Like even 10,000 attack out of a monster, I would rather have the armor shredding in a lot of cases. Maybe not today, but next month, five months from now, a year from now, give me the armor shredding. So that's the, the Midgar Swarms. Uh, one thing I was going to show you guys is just how much troop armor a lot of people have. So if we come to here to boost, I've got 68,000 troop armor. And I don't even have my gear, my armor gems on. This is just with my monster gear and stuff. 68,000. So if you're wiping out 10% of that, that's over 6,000 armor. I mean, and it's going to do more than that on the stronger people. I know some people with over 200,000 troop armor, 200,000% troop armor. So if you're taking out 10% of that, that's 20,000 armor you're wiping out. I would rather wipe out 20,000 armor than, you know, have 5,000 troop attack for sure. So that's my take. I like the armor shredding monsters, and there's two of them. So there's the Midgar Swarms. And uh, how you get the Midgar Swarms materials is you attack the Carlo Boss, the shifting Carlo Bosses. They drop uh, Midgar Swarm hatching stones, and occasionally they'll drop an egg. It's pretty rare, but I would be patient. Just if you keep attacking it, eventually you'll get an egg, and eventually you'll get a good egg. Eventually you'll get the epic or the legendary, which I would personally try to wait. Save your monster food for the three, four star Midgar Swarms. Uh, yeah, so I mentioned there's two monsters, though. There's the Midgar Swarm, and the other monster is the Cacular. And uh, yeah, so here's the Cacular. I've got a four star, the Golden Cacular. It does 15% armor shredding. Uh, the downside is it takes a lot of monster food to get a small percentage of armor shredding past the you know the base one. So that's why I would wait. I would save up, try to get a four star. Uh, I would even, if you have a three, I would maybe even wait, see if you can get a four star first. But the Caculars, 15%. And uh, that's a good, that's a lot of armor shredding. So if you get three of these on your wall, you'll have 45% armor shredding. <laughs> Half their armor, gone. Just from your monsters. So, I think that's the way to go, guys. And I would I would save your monster food to power up these guys, even though it's a lot of monster food for 1%. You want to... I'd rather have a really, really good monster a little bit better than have a decent monster good, right? Give me the good monster and make it just a little bit better, because I'm going to be using this monster all the time. I'm going to use it for offense, for defense when I get the monster slot open. This monster is always going to be in use. I'd rather have this monster a little bit better than make a bad monster or a good monster okay or decent. So that's why I would recommend saving all your monster food for the Caculars and the Midgar Swarms. Uh, I think those are the best two monsters by far. I think they're going to scale with the game. As people get more armor, those monsters are going to be more and more valuable. Now, that doesn't mean, uh, you know, maybe in the meantime, while you're trying to get a four star, maybe you want to get a decent monster to use in the meantime. And uh, probably the next best monster after those two is the Carla Boss. If you can get a three or four star Carla Boss, they give you a lot of troop armor, a lot of troop attack. So it's a good monster to have. You know, it's both offensive and defensive. So here, this one is a 3-star at level 2. It does uh, almost 7,000 troop attack per armor limit. So that's the max. So assuming you have 18,000 armor, you'll hit that. And uh, and it also gives you 5,000 armor. So that's pretty cool, right? That's a decent monster. I use the Carla Bosses all the time. Uh, and, you know, once you get your monster farm leveled up, you can send multiple monsters per march. So it's good to have a bunch of monsters. Now, the, the downside is how much food you want to use to get one of these monsters really good, when I could have put all this on the armor shredding monster and made that monster even better. So I kind of wish I had saved, been a little more patient, a little more thoughtful. But uh, Carl Boss is still a decent monster. So, And a lot of these monsters are really good for offense. Like this one, if you're attacking with only cavalry troops, really good monster. Same with even those one stars that I was talking about. Say you want to be a month, if you want a monster just for today <laughs> or this month, these three monsters are okay. Now, personally, I would probably wait. I would try to get a four star Quetzalcoatl if you want cavalry. Uh, I, I did power up the Galvanade one because there isn't a good mage buffing monster. 
and I do a lot of attacks with mages. So you can make a case for that monster just because no other monsters really buff mage attack too much. However, that mage attack was 5,000. This actually gives me more troop attack, and it'll buff all my troops. So the Karlobos is a superior monster if you can get him. Uh, so, and, and you're going to want to attack a lot of Karlobos, the shifting Karlobosses, because it drops the Midgar Swarm. Um, let's see, yeah, it drops the Karlobos, drops the Midgar Swarm materials. And it also drops the Karlobos materials. So it's a decent monster to get. you got a decent chance of getting something that you could use. Uh, the other monster I would recommend attacking is the Cactulars. Cac, uh, Cac, I struggle with that. Cactular. The Cactular monsters. And uh, the reason is they drop the Cactular hatching stones and the Cactular eggs, which are the armor shredding monster. So, really good right here. Uh, what else does it drop? Mandrake, uh, Trenet, and yeah, really, really, you just attack these for the Cacular Hatching Stones and the Cacular Eggs. So, you know, I would attack those two monsters. Maybe you want to attack the Shifting Flan for the event because you get a lot of, right now, for the events, if you really need to hit that Tier 3 or Tier 4 in the Winter is Coming or the Tier 2, you might want to just attack the Shifting Flans because it takes a lot less MP and you get quite a bit more of the Crystal Snowflakes per MP. But uh, in the, anyways, long run, if you want monsters, I would attack the Karlobos or the Cacular. Because those are the best two monsters, I think, by far. I think it's not even close. Uh, you know, Karlobosses are good too, but, but uh, I would love to have three armor-shredding monsters on my wall. That would be so epic. So that's what I'm working towards. And that's the monsters, guys. Uh, let's move on. And I'm moving a lot around in my chair. I completely forgot I was going to try to be still. Sorry, guys. I need to, I need to focus. I, got, I get so into this game that I forget that I'm alive even. <laughs> so what gear to power up? Uh, there's, so let's, let's go back. There's two different styles of trap accounts. There's the attack, offensive, capture your hero trap account. And then there's the real defensive. I'm trying to play wrong, long run. I'm trying to get victories on the battle reports. And uh, so which direction you're going will kind of shift what gear you're going to want to power up. Uh, and of course you could do a mix of the two, just a good balanced account. And that's probably what most people should do. But yeah, so in terms of trying to get victories and just really good defensive gear in general, I would go Undertaker. The reason is you get the city defense HP. And HP's really, really important for defense. One reason is we have a good way to get city defense armor, and that's the Aeon Flux gems. So if you've got six or seven Aeon Flux gems, even level three or higher, you're going to have a lot of city defense armor. Now you're going to want to fill in and get city defense HP. And there are some gems for city defense HP, like the Carlo Boss defense gem, but a lot of your city defense HP and HP in general will come from your gear. And there's really not a good way to get a lot of HP otherwise. It's pretty much gear and gems. So, uh, you know, you're going to want to go, want to have pretty good HP from your gear. That's why I would recommend the Undertaker. A lot of HP and Ice Elemental HP. Both good, right? So if you've got a bunch of Ice Troops, <laughs> you're going to get double, basically. Because you get this 100% and you get this City Defense HP bonus. And, of course, it scales as you level this up. And at level 30, I actually don't have any level 30 Undertaker on this account. Uh, the highest I have is a 17 ring, but you can see, you start getting over a thousand, in the thousands of percentage for HP. So quite a bit of HP from your gear. It's probably the best defense gear that most people can get because it, it, it just takes the mana wrenches. And you get quite a bit of mana wrenches in these new gear chests. So I'm... I'm Pretty, I'm a believer in Undertaker gear. I think if you want to get victories, it's probably the best gear to have. Now, if you don't have a lot of Aeon Flux gems, and you don't have a lot of City Defense armor, the next gear that I would recommend is the Guardian gear. It's also really good defense gear. You get the Guardian armor bonus, so if you have Guardians, they're going to be extra tanky. 
It's got the city defense armor bonus, so you're going to have a lot of armor on your guardians, which is going to... And they already have pretty good base HP and good base armor, so it, it helps to get that decent percentage on them. And the earth elemental, like this is all good defense buffs. So as you power this up, the buffs get really, really high for armor from this gear. So definitely you can make the case for guardian gear. Uh, I think those are probably the best two, the Undertaker and the Guardian. Now, other good gear for defense, for trying to get victories, is the Magitek Alpha and the Archean. Uh, both give you troop HP, and the Archean also gives you armor and earth elemental troop attack. So this is actually kind of a sneaky attack gear too, because you get the defense buffs, the HP, and the armor from this gear. And then if you have Earth Elementals, which are get the extra bonus for defense, you get a good attack bonus for them. So it's kind of a cool gear, kind of a sneaky gear. And it's and it already gives you, a lot of this gear gives you trap HP, trap attack. Like it's kind of good defense gear just in general anyway. So I like the Archean for defense. And the Magitek Alpha gives you the troop HP and it gives you warrior attack. So both of those, decent for defense, right? Really, one, one of my, this is, Gear, another cool thing about this gear is it's good for attacking, it's good for defense, it's just good general purpose gear. So I would definitely consider at least trying to make one of these gear pieces pretty powered up that you can incorporate in your gear. And it takes the Magitek salves. So if you're powering up, maybe maybe have two gear pieces of Magitek Alpha that you're powering up, maybe you have three or four Undertaker gear that you're powering up. Uh, they take different materials so you can kind of power them both up at the same time. Uh, and then the Archean even takes a separate gear. So maybe you want two Archean pieces, two Magitek Alpha pieces, and then four Undertaker pieces, or three Undertaker pieces, and a Guardian piece. Uh, you know, those are all viable. I think that's pretty much the only gear you're going to want for defense, for like victory, for real, for getting defensive bon bonuses, like the HP and the armor. That's the best gear for getting victories on battle reports. Now, if your sole focus... So that's, I mentioned two different trap accounts. That's the defense, the real defensive, get victories on the battle reports, try to survive attacks. Uh, the other one is the offensive. And for the offensive gear, uh, it's the Infernian, it's the Mage Bane, it's the Hydrian. That's all epic gear for doing a lot of attack. And the reason is you get this troop attack bonus and it, it gets pretty big as you get this gear leveled up. Uh, let me see, I think the highest level I have on the Infernian is my weapon. You can see though, I focus more on getting victories on the battle report than I do just trying to deal a lot of damage. But if you're trying to deal a lot of damage, Infernian, really good, good uh, troop attack bonus, and you get warrior attack bonus, so, and you get fire elemental attack bonus, and ar some armor piercing percent. All good. Uh, Mage Bane's kind of a similar story. The thing with Mage Bane is it gives you some troop HP just with its general, uh, you know, the, the legendary Mage Bane gives you troop HP, but as you power it up past legendary, you get uh, troop attack against mages and troop attack. So again, that's a good dealing a lot of damage gear. If somebody's attacking you, especially if they're attacking you with mages, you're going to do tons of damage to them. But even just that troop attack, it scales up, it gets pretty high as you power up this gear. So you could do that. Uh, and the other option is the Hydrian. Uh, solid troop attack. I think I have my boots. I should have clicked my boots because I have them pretty powered up. But if you're trying to capture heroes, if you get a decent set of Hydrian powered up, look at that, 7,000 troop attack from the boots. Nice. And cavalry attack is crazy. So if you've got a lot of the Hydrian gear powered up, you could go kind of a heavy cavalry, have like half your troops cavalry. And that means half your troops are going to get this 10,000% cavalry attack. And they're also going to get this 6,900%. You know, so that's a good combination, right? Good gear. Uh, also, for dealing a lot of damage defensively, you could go um, the Grim Reaper gear. Now, this gear, you can see I got the helmet up to 28. Because I'm going to be using this for a lot of different purposes. But you get the troop attack. And at this level, it's almost 3,000, or 2,700% troop attack. Nice. Decent warrior attack, 1,900. You get attack bonus against warriors, 3,600. And you get the uh, fire elemental attack bonus. 
So you could use this if you're just trying to capture a hero. If you have one of this gear pieces pretty powered up, it takes the mana wrenches too. So you could do, you could get this powered up and you could also power up some Hydrian at the same time. Uh, not a bad way to go. And then the other gear is Glacian. If you want to, you know, do a lot of damage to somebody attacking you, you could have some Glacian gear powered up. And the Glacian gear, it's a lot of troop attack, mage attack, ice elemental troop attack, and it cripples warriors. So that all that is all offensive. Uh, you know, you can use it defensively, but you're going to deal a lot of damage with all that. All four of those are attack bonuses, essentially. Even that cripple warrior, it's making their warrior's HP go down, so you're going to kill more of them out of that. So you could power up, and the numbers get pretty big as you power this up. The downside is it takes the Magitek Binding Agent, which is also what some of the better gear takes. So maybe maybe you'd rather have that Binding Agent for, you know, your Hydrian. If that's the question. Do you want to buff your mages, or do you want to go cavalry? It's really just more what your focus is in the game. If you have a Shiva, maybe you'd rather power up the Glacian because your mages are going to just have crazy attack, right? And then if half your defensive troops are mages, kind of an interesting way to go. Uh, and I'd like to do an honorable mention for the Beastmaster. And the Beastmaster gear, the cool thing about it is it's trap attack. So if you get the T8 traps, or even if you have the T7 traps, you can get quite a bit of trap attack as this powers up. I think especially on the weapon. Let me let me see here. I think you could use this defensively. Now, I think this is just a really good gear to sit on while you're sleeping. If you have this gear, oh, I'm going to have to go to my inventory to see what the stats are on that. But I think it's pretty good gear for sleeping on because you're going to deal a lot of damage to anybody attacking you with that gear if you have a lot of good traps. Now, if you don't have good traps, I would not do the Beastmaster gear at all, but it is kind of fun. I, I'm, I'm, what I want to do is I want Beastmaster really powered up and use that with Cindy and attack people with traps. I think that would be pretty fun. That would be a blast, actually. So uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, inventory. And I can show you guys what some of the trap attack is on that Beastmaster gear powered up. Uh, I powered up 1 to 30 just to see what we get on it, and that's the helmet. And it is over 11,000% trap attack. And another cool thing is it gives you the Earth Elemental Troop attack. So definitely wanted to throw this in as an honorable mention. If, you're, if you've got Gladio really powered up, you could pair him up with some Beastmaster gear, and you'd be a crazy good trap account. Or even, even if you're not using him, like just if you have Gladio really powered up and you have his Earth Elemental skills powered up, and you have a lot of Earth Elementals, Ooh, that's going to be pretty sweet. So an honorable mention for Beastmaster. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if you're online, I don't think that's the best gear to use for defense. But if you're offline and you're sleeping and you want some MP, you want your in max MP higher and you want that MP recovery you get from the, the uh, Beastmaster accessories, kind of a cool gear set. So I think that's, I think that's pretty much what gear you should power up. Um... Now, I mentioned, so there's the attack gear, and then there's the real defensive gear. You could do a combination, right? Like, nothing's stopping you from having Hydrian boots with Archean helmets or Archean, you know, some Archean pieces with some Agitech Alpha, with some Undertaker, and then maybe a Guardian Shield. Like, that would be a really good balance setup. Uh, I would actually probably encourage that for most people. Maybe you want a Guardian accessory, because the Guardian accessory, as you power it up, uh, let me go back to the Mythic Forge here. So as you power up, uh, you know, chances are you're going to have, you get four different materials when you open up the gear chest, right? You get, um, uh, but really only three of the gear pieces, I think, the gear mats, I think are good for powering up your gear. You're probably not going to want to power up so the four different types, there's the rune scribe plates. The thing with the rune scribe plates though is there isn't really good defensive gear that you can power up with a rune scribe plate. Some people say sentinel, but uh, even if you get the sentinel to 30, like it's good, it's good defense armor. But the thing is, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna fault anybody. If you get a level 30 sentinel gear piece, that's gonna be pretty good for a while. 
Uh, the downsides, once it's at 30, that's as good as it's going to be until they unlock past level 30. And I'd much rather have something like Guardian at 30 or, you know, Undertaker at 30. But anyways, yeah, you could use your Rune Scry plates on Sentinel. And if you get a Sentinel piece to 30, that is, that's going to be fine. But uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe you do want to do that. Maybe you want a level 30 Sentinel piece because you're going to have tons of the Rune Scribe to use. Uh, the Undertaker uses Mana Wrenches. So that's the second type of material. What was the third? The third is uh, what the Archean takes. So the Magitech Binding Agent. So in theory, you could power up all three of those. You could have Archean, Undertaker. I guess I'm just kind of repeating myself, am I not? I should probably wrap it up there because I'm just saying the same thing over and over again. But uh, yeah, so that's what I would do. I'd probably do a balance mix. Now, if, if you can, I would... You can see I love the Magitek Alpha gear. I think this is the best gear. The downside is you're only going to have so much of the Magitek selves, right? So, you know, it's probably... You could you could just power up all your Magitek gear, and as you get it, try to keep them all in unison. Get them all to 15, then get them all to 16, then get them all to 17. Or what you could do is just focus on a couple of the Magitek gear pieces. So maybe you just want to do, like, the body armor, the helmet, and the boots. Uh, you know, you could power those quite a bit. I think the Magitek Alpha gear, it is probably the best best gear. Uh, I, I'm sticking by that for a while because, I mean, look at this. Look at this. 6,000 troop HP. Even if you max some of the Undertaker gear, you're not going to have much more than that for HP. Plus, you can use this gear for offense. Because so I would definitely try to get some Magitek Alpha gear. Like, just get at least one really good Magitek Alpha gear piece. I don't think you'll regret it. I think if you can at least get one good Magitek Alpha gear in your setup, you'll be real nice. Um, yeah, so I think that kind of wraps it up. Monsters, you're going to want the Kakutars and the Midgar Swarms. And for gear, I would just do a good mix, preferably Undertaker, in your mix for defense. Some Magitek Alpha, maybe some Hydrian, some Archean. You know, really decide what your account is, what your account needs to. I would try to try to see what you're lacking, right? So, so go to your profile, go to your boots, and see. Okay, what's my attack? What's my HP? And what's my armor? What's my city defense attack? City defense HP and city defense armor. If you've got a bajillion city defense armor, I would not go guardian gear. I would not power up your guardian gear. Like for me. I've got the Astral, the, uh, the, the Aeon Flux Gems, and I've got an Astral. So I've got more than enough City Defense Armor. Oh, well, actually, yeah, wow, yeah, I've got a ridiculous amount of City Defense Armor. What I need is HP. So if I was going to start fresh, I would want Undertaker gear, because that's going to give me some City Defense HP and give me a little more balanced account. Uh, so I would look at your numbers, see what you're lacking on. If you don't have much... City Defense Armor, if you don't have the Aeon Flux Gems, then Guardian Gear's good. Try to, I would try, I would want probably twice as much armor as HP. So, I think if you, if you have more than twice as much armor, then maybe you want to go more HP oriented, and vice versa. Uh, attack, really, attack's just, yeah, attack's always going to help out, right? So, you know, I, I would value HP a little bit more than attack. But uh, again, if you want to be an attack trap account, you're going to need a ton of troop attack. So in that case, you know, you could neglect your HP and armor if you want and solely focus on attack. You're probably going to be defeated by a lot of the stronger players. And, you know, if they rally you, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. But hey, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun too because you're going to kill a lot of troops. So it's really just however you want to play. Uh, it's what you're going to want to power up. But I think that pretty much covers it. Hope you guys are all doing good. It's been, uh, it's been kind of a fun day. I know a lot of people have been somewhat annoyed by this introduction to this new research because, you know, a lot of people just bought a lot of packs. And now all of a sudden there's more packs that you could buy. <laughs> and it is kind of annoying. But, but uh, I'm definitely playing long run. Uh, and I'm, playing, I'm trying to be a little bit more cost effective. Like, sure, these are all really good, but I'm going to hold out, try to, try to, if I can get just twice as many of the tomes in the pack, 
that's a, that's a lot of money you're saving, right? So once I think once we can get more than 5,000 elite tomes from a pack, whether that be like a Moogle market, maybe I want to get the Moogle market doubler if we get these tomes in a Moogle event, or if we get a realm boss for these, I'll definitely probably hold out for that. But uh, Or hopefully we'll get some event that we can get these. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, but, you know, not a bad pack to get. If you want to be really good this week, <laughs> it's a pretty good pack. So there's that, guys. Yeah, I, I did that video, What to Learn from 2018. And one thing was wait a month on the packs. And I'm going to stick by that. Though this kind of threw a wrench in that because this is a way better pack than a lot of the others. Uh, what packs would be better than this one right now are probably the Hero XP packs. I would think, I would still prefer, man, we had that, ooh, is this guy under attack? Maybe I want to reinforce him quick. Let me see what's going on here. Mm, not sure where they're going with those arrows. Very strange. Uh, anyway, anyways, where is that going? Looks like it's barely moving. Hmm. Um, strange. Yeah, so I completely forgot what I was talking about there. <laughs> My bad, guys. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there. I think that pretty much covers it, right? Uh, oh, I was I was talking about what packs. Um, yeah, personally, I would still... We had those packs at Christmas time. Not at Christmas. It's not even Christmas time. Uh, what was it? The Thanksgiving packs or the Black Friday packs that came with every hero XP, uh, every hero medals, and it also came with the hero weapons, and it came with MP doublers. I want a pack like that. That pack is an epic pack, and with the MP doublers, it's going to be good forever, right? Like, having those MP doublers really helps out every time you level up your hero. Uh, just storing up MP in between the realm bosses, I think the MP doublers are really nice. So I'm going to hold out for another pack, because I don't have all the MP doublers yet. I've got Luna, I've got Promptos, I've got Cindy's, and I've got Noctis and Gladio. So I've got five of the eight heroes. Uh, seven here. Three, five, six. Yeah, I've got five of the eight heroes MP doublers. So if I can get a pack to get the other three and a bunch of XP and a bunch of medals, that's what I'm holding out for. Um, yeah, for sure. That or a good, good doubler. Good uh, realm boss doubler or quadrupler or Moogle market doubler or quadrupler. But I would not fault anybody for getting those elite defense tomes because you get good buffs from that, right? And traps are fun. It's cool. I'm, I'm happy they're doing something to make traps good again because I did not like the days of traps just being useless. And just and you're more likely to get defeats on your battle reports if you had a lot of traps because they're just it's like just a weak meat shield pretty much. But now people are going to have hundreds of thousands of trap HP, trap attack. Your traps are going to be tanky. And people have millions of traps, right? Like 3 million traps. Uh, probably most people don't have too much more than 3 million. But every little bit helps. So, cool. We got TA traps now, guys. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Alright, take it easy. I'm out of here.